Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a large laptop from Lenovo. This is the IdeaPad. 320. It costs about $479 with an i3 and it's got a 17 inch display. You can see how big it is here. We're going to be putting this thing through its paces here in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look now at the hardware. As I mentioned, this has a 17.3 inch display. It is only, though, at a resolution of 1600 by 900, which means that it's a fairly low resolution display for a 17 inch area of screen. But uh, if you are having vision issues or other things, everything will be rather large on screen here. You can see just how big these icons are. So it might uh, look better for some folks who are having trouble seeing some of these tiny high resolution screens these days. Now the display on this one is a TN display, which means you do need to get yourself centered in the right way to get the best quality image. It will drop off in its image quality once you move off center with it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. We see this on a lot of lower cost laptops. Surprisingly, I like the display better uh, than I've seen on some of the six or $700 gaming laptops we've looked at recently. Those also have TN displays. This one just isn't as washed out as those are. So it actually does look a little nicer, but it still has many of the limitations you'll get with one of those low cost displays. It has an i3-7100U that is the current generation Intel processor, at least for the next couple of weeks before they release the new ones. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It has a one terabyte spinning hard drive built in. Uh, you could probably swap that out. I would imagine you can also get at the RAM. Unfortunately, Lenovo does not make these computers easy to get into to upgrade so I was reluctant to risk damaging this one but I do believe the hard drive can definitely be swapped out and you could probably bring it up to uh, 16 gigs of RAM if you need to but 8 gigs for what you might do with something like this is fine now if you have a bad back this is not the computer for you it weighs 6.17 pounds or 2.8 kilograms. It's probably one of the heavier laptops I have looked at, and that includes some of these fancy gaming laptops that also weigh a ton. I think this one actually weighs more than some of those do. Uh, so bear in mind, you will be lugging this thing around and feeling the pain. Uh, four or five hours of battery life out of it, which is lower than I expected given how much it weighed. I thought maybe it was heavy because they had a lot of batteries built in, but no, it's just heavy and doesn't get good battery life. So four to five hours is about all you're going to get on it. Let's take a look at the ports here on the side. We've got the power adapter plugged in over there. Gigabit ethernet here for connecting up to a wired network. HDMI out. This will support 4K, but only at 30 Hertz. So uh, you can get a higher resolution display plugged into it when you're docked. Two USB 3.0 ports here. Headphone microphone jack here. There's a USB type C port here. This is not Thunderbolt. It is just USB C and it does not support power or uh, video. So you will get your data devices plugged in like hard drives and sticks and whatnot, but no video, no power. There is an SD card slot here for getting photos off your camera or whatever. Uh, the card does stick out, but it does work. So you can get some stuff out of your camera when you need to. And over here is something that a lot of people might find of interest because it has an optical drive. I believe this is a uh, DVD burner. It doesn't seem to want to eject itself at the moment. There it goes. So if you've got uh, software on CD or you want to make your own CDs or DVDs, you can do that on here. It's got enough room, of course. Uh, so you do have that optical drive. And then right here is a Kensington lock for locking it down on your desk. So it's hard enough to steal given how big it is, but you can make it harder uh, by putting a lock in that spot there. The keyboard is very nice on this one. It mirrors some of the new keyboard designs we've seen on some other Lenovo devices this year. Uh, nice keyboard layout. Uh, decent and travel on the keys here and uh, pretty nice to type on. The trackpad is also equally nice and very functional and you also get a fingerprint reader there as well but because this is a budget laptop there is no backlighting on the keyboard. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. We took a look at YouTube in my 1080p video at 60 frames per second. No issues there whatsoever. No drop frames. Everything played back very nicely. Uh, that's the performance I expect out of this current generation of Intel hardware. It really handles high def video very well and it does so here so you should have no problems on YouTube and other places. I also took a look at nasa.gov browsing the web and it seems like it loaded up very quickly on that as well. The laptop does have AC wireless so it is
is a little faster than some other uh, lower end laptops that don't have AC wireless built in. And it was definitely uh, snappy and responsive due to that networking connection, but also due to the processor on board. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 102, which puts it actually a little faster than the more expensive ThinkPad 13 running with the exact same processor. That one came in at 86.6. .6. And I think the reason is uh, that this one has its memory configured in dual channel configuration, uh, which means that it can move data in and out of the processor a little faster. And uh, this is something very CPU intensive. And it looks like uh, the memory configuration on here does give it some pretty decent performance. And this test is a good indicator of that. And Microsoft Word and Office also perform quite nicely on this machine. So if you're doing uh, document editing or desktop publishing like we're doing here, I think you'll have no issues getting all of your work done on it. So it is a uh, back to school lap top and it does do school tasks quite well in our testing. And when all the boring stuff is out of the way, you can play some games on this thing. Uh, remember, this is not a gaming laptop. It doesn't have all of the graphics processors that gaming laptops do have. So you will not be able to run the latest AAA titles, but some things do run quite nicely on it. We tested Minecraft a little earlier, getting frame rates anywhere between 85 and 100 frames per second, which is really decent actually for a laptop at this price point. But the reason why the uh, graphics performance is so good is because the resolution on this display is a lot lower than many of the other laptops we've looked at recently with the same processor. Most of those were running at a 1080p resolution or higher. So there's less pixels to render, so it's able to do a better job at uh, getting the game's uh, frame rate up in this case. So it works well with Minecraft. It also works pretty well with Rocket League. We were getting frame rates there around 46 to 58 frames per second. Again, at its native resolution with all of the settings turned down to the minimums there, so it is able to play that. We also ran Dota 2 on it as well. Again, lowest settings at the native resolution. We were seeing frame rates uh, around 50 to 60 frames per second on a few bot matches there. So I think it is uh, relatively playable across the board on a lot of popular games that don't stress the hardware too much. And in the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 5,340. That does put it a little ahead of the ThinkPad 13 we talked about earlier in the video here. We're seeing slightly better graphics performance out of this device. In this case, it's not the lower resolution display because this test runs at 720p. I believe it's the memory here, the dual channel memory, that's giving us a performance boost on this computer. And it's actually pretty good. Uh, remember, you're not going to run any of the AAA stuff on here. So parents should be OK with this laptop. It won't run a lot of the games that people want to play, but it is able to play a lot of games that are not taxing the hardware all that much. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test on the computer to see how well it performs under load for a long period of time. We got a score of 94.8% on that test, which is not a passing grade. And that indicates that it might slow down a bit uh, the longer it is placed under load by a game, for example. So you might see some variations in the speed of the games uh, the longer they are played here. Not bad, but uh, it could be a little better. But the fans are not that loud on here, even under load. So that was a good thing. The fan noise is pretty minimal on it. And one last thing to check out on the computer here, and that is its Kodi performance. We've got a 140 megabits per second 4K HEVC file playing back. This chokes older computers, but because this one has current generation Intel hardware, it's able to keep up just fine. Like some other i3 machines I've seen, I occasionally see a skip frame here or there, but generally it's able to play back those files without any problems at all. So overall, I think a pretty good value if you can deal with the weight and the size on this. Under 500 bucks, it's got an i3 processor, decent for casual gaming, none of the popular newer games, of course, but uh, by and large, I think it's a pretty good buy for what they've put together here. So if you're not looking for a really fancy laptop, but want something relatively portable with decent performance, uh, this is definitely something worth considering here from Lenovo. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.